Hello and welcome back to Design Foundations. In the previous lesson, we talked about visual balance and composition. In this lesson, we'll look at the design principles that will help you achieve them. Visual hierarchy and the Gestalt theory of visual perception are soft rules that can help you create designs with good visual balance every time. Let's talk about hierarchy first. Hierarchy is the practice of laying out elements on a canvas in a way that implicitly shows how some elements are more important than others. In the introduction lesson, we talked about creating a promotional booklet for a high-end unique decor company. This is the cover for the finished design we'll be working together to create, so now let's talk about its visual hierarchy. So what grabs your attention first when you look at this design? I'm going to guess it's the title and the beautiful item in the photo. These elements have a top hierarchy in the composition, meaning they're both the most important in terms of content while also being the most visually notorious. Let's see how that works in terms of visual perception. When building a visual hierarchy, it's important to consider the way in which people look at the text and graphics in general. There's a general pattern in how people read and grasp information in design. Typically, viewers start at the top left corner, scan to the top right corner, and then their gaze returns to its left and keeps going back and forth, just like reading. This is called an F or Z viewing pattern, due to the shape the gaze forms on the content. Pairing your visual hierarchy with this knowledge removes a lot of guesswork to where to place the text and design elements in a visual hierarchy. So if the top hierarchy is on the title and main object, what comes next? Well, if we follow the viewing pattern, you can see it's the subtitle, then these information text boxes, and finally the information about the decor piece here at the side at the bottom. It's, it's not only because they follow the viewing pattern, but also because the font size decreases as does the hierarchy. Other designs that help with hierarchy are color and font styles, not just sizes. Stronger, more vibrant colors have a higher hierarchy than softer, subtle colors. Generally, thick font weights have more hierarchy than thin ones. Remember that it's all about the visual weight of elements and how they relate to each other. You can practice hierarchy by looking at other complete designs and analyzing how the designer set up the hierarchy. After a while, you'll notice it straight away. Of course, there are rule breakers and unique compositions like this version of the cover where the title is tilted on its side. You can also generate hierarchy by using color in addition to font size. Color can sometimes affect the order in which we read things as well as font thickness. Apart from visual hierarchy, there's another set of design principles that will help you create designs with a good overall balance. They are called Gestalt principles and form part of the Gestalt theory of human visual perception. The Gestalt principles derive directly from psychology and the science of how humans see and perceive things. There are eight principles that can be applied to your designs in a way that can subconsciously affect how a person perceives your content. The principles are similarity, proximity, closure, figure and ground, continuity, order and symmetry, and synchrony. Let's look at each one in detail so you can get a good grasp on how they work. The first Gestalt principle is simplicity. According to psychologists, when we identify an object, we first seek to identify its outline. We then compare it to known shapes and patterns. Without even realizing we're taking these steps, we finally combine the identified elements to recognize the whole. These principles of simplicity state that people perceive and interpret ambiguous or complex images in their simplest form. In this example, the bird on the left has a lot of detail and color, while the one on the right is a simple outline. Both are easily and quickly perceived as hummingbirds. This principle is highly valuable when designing logos and icons. Using this principle, you can take a complex visual and simplify it to the point that it's only an outline and is still recognizable. The next Gestalt principle is similarity, and it states that objects with similar characteristics are perceived as more closely related than objects that share no similar features. Our minds simply group the similar objects together regardless of their proximity to one another. So let's look at this group of shapes consisting of circles, stars, and hexagons. In the example on the left, even though the orange circles aren't in the same line, they still feel related. On the example on the right, the three circles are aligned, removing all the guesswork for the viewer. Design elements can be perceived as related by sharing any sort of characteristic, including color, shape, size, and texture. The proximity principle states that objects placed closer together are perceived as being more related to each other than those spaced further apart. As you can see in this example, the nine circles on the left are perceived as one group, while the example on the right feels like two groups of three and six circles each. In the closure principle, our minds fill visually empty spaces and complete them. This is the principle that designers use and refer to as negative space. 
In the basketball example here, you can see that in both figures, the lines are easy to perceive, even if they're not technically not there. Those empty lines are what we call the negative space, the area that our brains fill in automatically without even needing to think about it. We see a basketball regardless of the lines. In the WWF logo, the designers used negative spaces to create a shape that we instantly recognize as a panda. The areas that would be white on a real panda are empty, but it doesn't matter. In this example, you can see the use of both closure and simplicity principles. The principle of figure and ground states that we perceive an object either as the element of focus in the foreground or as part of the background. People tend to determine the figure and ground relationship before making any other resolutions about what they see. We've evolved to prioritize this perception so we can better navigate our surroundings. Without it, we'd be running into objects and tripping over sidewalks. In this example, when the profile of the face is alone, it's instantly perceived as a face. But on the left, the two profiles facing each other also resemble a vase. Our brains go back and forth between each visual. With the continuity principle, we perceive lines as part of a continuous movement, unless there's an abrupt change or object blocking the continuation. Once our eyes begin to follow a line or curve, we believe that line will continue in the same direction indefinitely. This creates a line of sight or line of movement. In design, this principle helps the viewer follow an indicated or subconscious visual flow. This example shows two sets of wavy lines, one with gaps and breaks and the other continuous. The left one is a bit confusing at first. Are they shapes? Are they broken lines? The right one, on the other hand, we instantly perceive as two wavy intertwined lines that could potentially continue in either direction indefinitely. The order and symmetry principle states that people tend to perceive objects as symmetrical shapes whenever possible. It's human nature to look for order among chaos. For example, in this graphic with six oval eye shapes, we don't see six shapes. We see three pairs of eyes due to how the interior circles resemble pupils looking towards the center. In a previous lesson, we talked about symmetrical and asymmetrical balance. This principle is the foundation of that te design technique. Order and balance are directly related to each other. Look at the example of the symmetrical and non-symmetrical mountain icons. The one on the right more orderly and complete in a way, while the one on the left has a good asymmetrical balance. The last Gestalt principle, synchrony, dictates that elements moving in the same direction are perceived as more related than the same elements moving in a different direction. Elements don't have to be physically moving for the principle to apply, they only need to be imply movement. So you can achieve this technique with arrows, triangles, and pointy shapes. Essentially, the pointy bit denotes the direction the shape is going in. This example shows two groups of triangles angled to point in different directions. We can perceive that the four triangles pointing to the right are part of the same group. On the graphic to the right, the principle is applied fully, grouping three triangles together in two instances. Using Gestalt principles in design isn't exactly a law you need to follow. It's more like a suggestion to help your designs be more effective. If you want to learn more about Gestalt principles, we've left a link for you in the course materials from an article in our blog. Just like visual balance and composition, Gestalt principles are a technique that improves with time. When you look at designs around you in your daily life, try and find how Gestalt principles play a part. In all the upcoming lessons using the promotional booklet example, I'll make a point of explaining where Gestalt principles show up. In the next lesson, we'll talk about a design technique called alignment. I'll show you how to use tools inside VisMe to achieve optimal alignment for your designs. If you still haven't created a VisMe account to follow along with the course, now is the perfect time to do so. All right, great job everyone, and I will see you in the next one.